The next type of queue which is very important for telephone service is called the Erlang queue. And this was formalised and the equations were developed by Agner Erlang, who was an engineer with the Danish telephone company in the early 1900s. And this type of queuing has been formalised and worked out mathematically basically ever since telephone service began in the early 1900s. You can see that the calculations are complex and there are several types of Erlang calculation ranging from uh, calculating simple equipment requirements through to queuing and the one that's used most commonly in customer service is called Erlang C and this is how we deal with um, calls that come in in a random order can be queued and then are served on a first come first served basis and this is actually an extension of the Poisson distribution that we had talked about earlier. Now you can see that the equations for, or the, the main equation for working out the Erlang C calculation is quite complex and it's not generally done in spreadsheet arithmetic. This is done usually in Visual Basic for applications and it's done in code behind the Excel workbook. I'll just show you an example of what this looks like for the Erlang calculations. So suffice to say that behind the Excel workbook we've got our code written here and you'll see the code is reasonably complex because the code for doing all of that Erlang calculation takes quite a few pages of equations. However, once it's set up, you can use it as what's called a user-defined function. So in this workbook, we'll be using user-defined functions to do the Erlang calculations. Back to the workbook, you can see that we've set up five main functions for solving the Erlang equations or applying the Erlang equations to your customer service stream. The first one, agents. In other words, if you know what a given service level is and you know what your service time is and the number of calls coming in and the average handle time, you can work out the number of agents required. Now this is probably the most commonly used one in service centers and we'll go through the, how that's computed service levels and all of these are permutations of the same set of equations service level means that if you know how many agents you have you know the service time you know the calls per hour and the average handle you can work out what your service level is in other words what percentage of calls were answered within a given time and uh, at a given grade of service average speed of answer again if you know the number of agents the number of calls per hour and the average handle time, you can work out what your average speed of answer is. Utilization is important because this shows the average busy time per agent across a group. So when you're doing um, staff management, it's really important to know the utilization. And queued shows you the percentage of calls that will be queued on arrival. So given these five functions, you can get a very good handle on the way that your service center works retrospectively in other words you can have a look through the data or you can use them for forecasting and for predicting what type of service you'll get so first up let's take a look at the agents function for the agents function if you know how many calls per hour are coming in and you know what the service level target is you can work out how many agents are required to meet that and if you take a look into one of the cells, you'll see that the formula is agents. And then you'll see when you click on this where it goes to, it will be the service level. So it will go into the service level column. It will then be the service time. It will then be the number of calls per hour and then the average handle time. So by using that standard function and you have that function loaded in your workbook, then you can use the agents function given those four different parameters to work out how many agents you need. And that's exceptionally interesting when you can make a trade-off between paying for extra agents and juggling your grade of service. So if, for example, your budget extends to only a certain number of agents, you can then decide whether you want to limit the number of calls coming in, whether you want to um, compromise your service level, whether you want to aim for better service time or better handle times. So using the agents function is a very important thing in tweaking costs 
for your customer care or for your call center. Similarly, using the service level function, you can work out what your service level is based on those four inputs. And the four inputs are the number of agents you have, the service time, in other words, what your service time goal is, number of calls per hour that come into you, and the average handle time. And by looking at the combinations of those, you can work out what your service level is. Now, when you want to put these results into a table, it's extremely useful to use conditional formatting. And here in the table, for example, I've conditionally formatted the cells so that 80% and below lights up in red. So that way, I can look through this table and see what the comfortable operating area is. And if my company mandates that I need to provide a service level above 80%, I'll know, for example, if, a, if 200 calls per hour come in, I will need to have more than 20 agents. So using the service level function is an excellent way of being able to work through what the parameters are and to work through, again, what your staffing needs to be, whether you can shape the number of calls per hour coming in, or whether you might be able to improve your average handle time to lift your service level. So all of those five different things are related, and it's the Erlang equations and the Erlang calculations that help you sort through and help you being able to trade off one against the other. In the resource pack, we have all of these functions, so it's definitely worth your while working through it and using these calculators as a tool for being able to predict your customer service.